What are the chances of getting lung cancer after quitting smoking and what are the risks? So in episode three of Phil and Dimitri's The Smoker Show, a woman named Diana called in to share that she was just diagnosed with lung cancer that same day. And you could hear the fear in her voice. Her, her, her voice was shaky and she was very obviously in shock after hearing the diagnosis. I, I really feel bad for her. But the reason I wanted to bring this up is because in her shock, she was trying to find an answer or something to blame for why she got lung cancer. And she did clarify that she was a smoker for 30 years and that she started vaping as soon as vaping came out. She didn't say exactly which year that was, but she did say that it was uh, at the time when the only thing available was a Sigalike. So I would estimate that anywhere between 2007 and 2010. She also made a statement directed to other vapors and said, quote, I just don't want you to keep it in your hand and just be doing it every puff of your breath like I did. So if you're going to vape, you do it like a cigarette and you put it down. Don't do this to yourselves." End quote. So she clearly believed that vaping was the cause of her lung cancer, or at least she thought that switching to vaping didn't help reduce the risk. So the thing that people need to understand is that when you smoke, you cause lifelong damage. Look at Leonard Nimoy from Star Trek, for example. He quit smoking in the 80s, but 30 years later, in 2015, he died from COPD as the result of smoking. And Dr. Norman H. Edelman, a consultant for the American Lung Association, has stated that it's not uncommon for someone to develop lung disease years or even decades after quitting smoking. I also did a little research related to the risks of lung cancer after quitting smoking, and I wanted to share what I found. So according to Oncolink.com, which is a cancer information site maintained by oncology healthcare professionals, the risk of lung cancer decreases as time passes after quitting, but the risk will never return to that of a never smoker. And other research has shown that the risk of lung cancer after quitting drops by 50% in the first 15 years of quitting, but that still leaves a high risk. The Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center has also developed a lung cancer screening tool designed to estimate the risk of lung cancer for people who have smoked for more than 25 years and who are between 50 and 75 years old. So I did a little test of that tool using Diana as an example or at least as close as I could estimate. A female age 50 who smoked for 30 years, at least 10 cigarettes per day, and who quit smoking 10 years ago. I don't know exactly how many cigarettes Diana smoked or when she quit, but I put in the best case scenario that the tool would let me use. That assessment shows that out of 1,000 people exactly like Diana, two out of every 1,000 people will be diagnosed with lung cancer. And something to note here is that this is only for lung cancer. This calculator doesn't take into account the dozens of other cancers and life-threatening illnesses caused by smoking. And in 2010, researchers did a retrospective study of 626 patients with lung cancer. Of these 626 people, 40% of them had quit smoking 10 years before being diagnosed with lung cancer, 60% of them quit smoking about 18 years before, and eight of them quit smoking more than 50 years ago. So clearly, the research shows that risks of lung cancer reduce over time, but that risk never goes away. Diana was a smoker for 30 years, and she had been vaping for maybe seven or 10 years. She probably drastically improved her health by switching to vaping and also reduced her risk of cancer, but unfortunately, the many years that she smoked had already caused the damage. And I also want to add that there's research that shows that quitting smoking also increases the chances of surviving lung cancer, so it's still definitely worth it. All that being said, though, I feel terrible for Diana, and I really do hope that she's able to beat it.